Hello friends, this video on solutions part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's check some numerical now. The first numerical is the vapor pressure of the pure liquids A and B are 450 and 700 m of Hg at a temperature that is 350 Kelvin. If you define the composition of liquid mixture if the total vapor pressure is 600 mm Hg. So the pure, let, let's take uh, this red guy as A and the blue as B. So it says that the vapor pressure of pure A is 450, that is P1 naught is 450 mm of Hg and P2 naught is 700 mm of Hg, correct? It is a pure liquid, it is P1 naught and P2 naught. Find the composition of liquid mixture. There is a liquid mixture here, right? This is liquid mixture. If the total vapor pressure is 600 mm, that is P1 plus P2, P1 plus P2 is equal to 600 mm of Hg given. So, see for this, we have a very simple formula. We know that P total is nothing but P I can take it this has P A it's not confused it is given P A let this take B, let this be P A naught let this be P B naught let this be P A and P B let this be X A X B and Y Y B not sure it is required yeah so then P total will be what P A plus P B correct that is nothing but P A naught into X A plus P B naught into X B. Correct. Or oh, this is also I can write in uh, one equation because I want to find the because here in this case if you see X A and X B are both unknown. Correct. And we have to find composition and vapor phase actually to find Y A Y B. This is something you have to find. So first you have to find X A X B because you have to find P A and B first. So this, this is nothing but P A naught or I can say this is nothing but P A naught minus P B naught into X A plus P B naught. Currently you can write this in one term because X B I can write 1 minus X A. Then you will get this one. If you write X B as more traction of B as 1 minus more traction of A, you will get this equation. So in this equation, if you see, P total is given, there is 600. P A naught is given, there is 450. P B naught is given, 700. P V naught is 700. So we have to find X A. We can do that. Let's put the values. P total is what? 600 mm is equal to P A naught, that is 450. P B naught, 700. mm into x a plus p b naught that is 700 correct you solve this you solve this equation you will get x a as 600 minus 700 is minus 100 by 450 minus 750 is minus 250 you know, 0.4 that is what you will get so if x a is 0.4 my x b is 0.6 Correct? I found both XA and XB. So this is 0.4 and this is 0.6. This is required. Why is this required? Because with this I can easily find P A and P B. Once I find P A and P B, then I can find Y and Y B. That is the composition in vapor phase. Right? So I have found the composition in liquid phase, XA and XB. So let's find P A and B first. P A and B what? As I told, P A is nothing but P A naught into X A. Rolls law. What is the P A naught? P A naught is what? 450 mm into X A is what? 0.4. And nothing but 180 mm of H. Similarly, P B is what? P B naught into X B. That is nothing but P B naught is 700. 700 mm 
into x b is 0 0.6 mole fraction of b. Solve this 7 into 6 is 420, 420 mm of So I have got P and P B also. P A is 180 and P B is 20. With this, it is very easy to find Y and by V. See, I told that mole fraction of A in vapor phase will be nothing but pressure of A in vapor phase by total pressure. Correct? What is the value of P A? 180 mm. And total uh, pressure will be how much? 600 we have seen. Or you can just add these two. In 600. Let's cancel. What you get is 0.3. So if y a is 0.3, y b will be nothing but 1 minus 0.3. Right? There is nothing but 1 minus y a. And there is nothing but 0.7. So I found the mole fraction of a and b. This is 0.3. And this is 0.7. So if you see here, the mole fraction of A was 0.4 here and in the vapor phase, the mole fraction of A become 0.3. The mole fraction of B was 0.6 in the vapor phase, the mole fraction of B becomes 0.3. That means B is more volatile. B is more volatile. Right? Right? That's how you solve the problem. So first understand what the question is saying, better draw the diagram and then you can put the values. It's easy to solve. Because once you visualize the problem, you can easily solve the question. In this question, the vapor pressure of pure liquid A and B was given, right? And uh, it was told that the vapor pressure of the final uh, mixture is this much. So with that, we calculated uh, first the mole fraction of A and B in the liquid phase. And then we calculated the partial pressure of A and B in liquid phase. And then we calculated the mole fraction of A and B in vapor phase. So the question says the partial pressure of ethane over a solution contain 6.56 gram of ethane is 1 bar. So let red be the ethane. Let my red is ethane. Here also red is ethane. Two scenarios. In the first scenario, the partial pressure of ethane over a solution contain 6.56 gram of ethane. This is the solution. It has 6.56 into 10 to the power minus 3 gram of ethane. So here the partial pressure is 1 bar. So let's assume this red is the ethane and I have water molecule also. So let, let me call this as A and this water molecule as B. So partial pressure of A is 1 bar. In the second case, the solution contains 5 into 10 to the power minus 2 gram of ethane. Right? The ethane quantity is changing. And this is again A and this is again B. So here, what is the partial pressure? So, we know that by Henry's law, this is a question of Henry law. See, partial pressure is directly proportional to mass of dissolved gas. So this ethane is a gas. Please note ethane is a gas. Ethane is not it is a gas. Ethane gas, methane gas, all gas. So mass of dissolved gas is directly proportional to the partial pressure. Right? So I can say M, this is case 1, this is case 2, let's suppose. M1 will be directly proportional to P1. And case 2, mass 2 will be directly proportional to P2. So from these two equations I can say that m1 by m2 will be nothing but p1 b2. Direct application of Henry's law. Correct. So let's put the value. So m1 is what here? 6.56 into 10 to the power minus 3 gram. Please note units. This is gram. And the second is m m2 is 5 into 10 to the power minus 2 gram. What is the value of p1? 1 bar. So this is p2. So when you solve this, P2 comes out to be 7.62 gram gram calcium and the unit will be bar and that is my answer. Pretty easy question, just you have to think that you have to apply Henry's law. Here, mass is variable in these two scenarios and the pressure will also vary definitely. The next question is aqueous solution of 2% non-volatile solute non-volatile solute 
So here I am taking solute which is non-volatile. You see, in the vapor phase there is no solute, right? This is my solute. Those things you have to understand. If it is non-volatile solute, just draw a solute without which is non-volatile. So if a two percent aqueous solution of non-volatile solute exert a pressure of one point zero four bar at normal boiling point of solvent, what is the molar mass of the solute? So point to note it is aqueous solution. That means this my solvent is water. Correct. This is a two percent non-volatile solute. So two percent non-volatile solute is generally by mass. Correct. This is two percent. So I can say that this is uh, if the total uh, total solution is equal to hundred gram. So my solute will be what two percent. That is two gram. And my solvent will be what my solvent will be ninety grams. Right, two percent. That is two gram. So my solute in this case I have a solute. That is, red is two gram, and the blue one is ninety-eight gram. This is what given. Now it says that the partial pressure the solute exerts. So let's assume that this is uh, the partial pressure. One second. Aqueous solution of two percent non-volatile solute exerts a pressure of one point zero two bar. The whole solution exerts. So here, if you see, the pressure whatever will be here will be because of solvent because it is a non-volatile solute. If you see, there is no red here, right? So this P two will be what one point zero zero four bar. See the the total pressure will be equal to partial pressure of water because the solute here is non-volatile, correct? And this is at the normal boiling. Point. We have to find the what is the molar mass of the solute. So this solute we have to find the molar mass. Correct. So one thing note to note is this is happening at the normal boiling point. So P two is given. Can I can I tell something about P two not? P two not is what the partial pressure of the pure water at normal boiling point, and that is something which we know, and that is nothing but one point zero one three bar. That is a known fact. This is something we know, right? Just by reading at the question, and uh, we know that this is one point zero one three bar, because this is nothing but the partial pressure of water or the pressure of pure water at normal boiling point. So I have P two naught, I have P two. From this, what can I find? So I know that P two is nothing but P two naught into x two. X two is nothing but mole fraction of water. So if I find the mole fraction of water, I can find the moles of solute also. Why? Because the mole fraction of water will be nothing but moles of water by moles of water plus moles of solute. So let's put this in the formula. And what is the value of moles of water? Moles of water is something we can find because the mass. Let me find first. Moles of water is what? Mass of water. By molar mass of water. Of water. What is the mass of water? Ninety gram. What is the molar mass of water? We know that eighteen gram per mole is ninety gram. This is eighteen gram per mole. Correct. So let's keep this value only. Don't solve it. This is my molar of water. So let me put this in this. Formula now. This formula. So let me rewrite this formula. So the we will get this formula. The formula is P two is nothing but P two naught into x two. That is nothing but moles of water by moles of water plus moles of sorry. So what is the value of P two? That is one point zero zero four bar. P two naught is One point zero one three bar, and this becomes moles of water. Is nothing but ninety eight by eighteen. Correct. Divide by moles of water again is ninety eight by eighteen plus moles of solute L A N of 
solute. And this moles of solute also I can write mass of solute is given 2 gram, 2 gram by molar mass of solute. So in this case, 2 molar mass of solute is my variable. So if you solve this equation, if you solve this, you get molar mass of solute will come out to be 41.35 gram per you can solve this actually, you get this value. This bar bar will be cancelled and this is gram, so it becomes gram per mole. We'll solve uh, similar kind of questions in a <coughs> different way in the next few slides where we talk about the concept of uh, dip, what you call it, increasing change in the pressure by adding, adding solute to a, solu uh, to a solution, to a solvent actually. That will we'll try to solve this the same question a little easier in the next few slides. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get pre study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.